Hey, how's it going? Sitting down with the Behringer Model D tonight and talking about it and taking a look at how it plays. Yeah, so the Behringer Model D, if you don't know Behringer at all or you're new to synthesizers, um, Behringer is kind of like the uh, mega blocks of the uh, synthesizer companies. Uh, what they're known most noticeably for are uh, copies of famous synthesizers and drum machines. And in this case, uh, the Model D is a copy of the, the Mini Moog. And the Mini Moog was developed by Moog back in the 1970s. It was a famous synthesizer that uh, was used on stage with a lot of uh, old school bands. And I'll post a, a link below from Reverb. It shows uh, them using the actual Mini Moog, not a Model D, but they're a copy, so you can make the same sounds on both. Uh, how the how the mini mo can be programmed to make you know Pink Floyd and Dr. Dre sounds so it's it's pretty cool. Anyway, back on topic here. So this is a copy of the Moog mini Moog. And when I first saw this, when I was just getting in the sense, I didn't. It looks way more complicated than it really is. In fact, when it came last week I was like well okay I better this is gonna take me a while to figure out and it's actually pretty easy so let's uh, not waste any time and let's dive in so when you get it and you take it out of the box and you start playing you're gonna go well, it's not making any sounds a couple things you gotta do to make this thing make sounds so it has three oscillators or oscillators pardon me sorry <laughs> guy get rid of that hitch anyway <clears throat> so um, at the very base, and what, if you don't know what an oscillator is, or you can't pronounce it like me, um, they, they're really what make the sounds in the synthesizer. So if right now, all of them are on, well, three wasn't on low, but it's off, so these would be on off switches. So if I don't touch any, if I touch something now, no sound. So what do I need to do to make this make sound? Well, one, let's take oscillator one, put it on 32 for the range. Uh, the waveform doesn't matter for right now. Give it some volume right here. And you're going, oh cool, I'm going to get some sound. What the hell? Well, see these switches here? Uh, this one turns on oscillator one. So, do I get sound now? No. I need to go down here to uh, the loudness section and I actually have to put some sustain on the sound so when I hold down a key it's not going to drop it off right away. So I got sound now. Now if I want to change that sound at a very basic level, just on oscillator number one, I can change the basic waveform of the oscillator, which will change the sound. So that's how, at the very base of the synth, how to one, turn on the oscillators, uh, one here, oscillator two here, oscillator three here, and control the volume of each oscillator here. They're all lined up right here. And the tuning, uh, let's talk tuning. So this is an analog instrument. And what is the difference between analog and a digital instrument? A digital instrument is basically a computer. It takes in power from a wall or a battery. You touch the keys and you adjust the dials on that digital instrument. How those are set and what keys you push will tell that computer inside that digital instrument what type of sound to make. Analog takes power in from the wall and through its circuitry makes sounds. There's no computer. It's modifying that power into sound and depending on what keys and dials you have set up on the instrument it's going to change that that into different sounds all right enough enough school let's look at how this thing works a bit more so we covered oscillator one we let's go ahead and add before we start adding an oscillator two and three let me just show you this switch over here so what this switch is going to do is it's going to put out a steady tone and you're going great what can i use that for well because this is an analog instrument it needs to be tuned from time to time and so if I go ahead and push down a key now which will be oscillator one put it up a little bit so that's pretty close to that tone see you can tune it 
because what's going to happen sometimes, and even what it says to do, I'll turn this off for a second. Even what it says to do in the manual is you got to basically plug this in the wall and let it run for 15 minutes for it to get up, to warm up, and be maintained tuned. But even when you do that, even as you play through it, you might notice that it's starting to get detuned. So you have to turn this guy on, hold down a key down here. On your, And if you have like a, you know, a digital tuner, this is a lot easier. Otherwise, you gotta kind of do it by ear. Close enough. Not great, but whatever. But that that's how you a way to tune it. You just this will make a steady tone, and then you play around with this and play some notes until it all sounds aligned. Also, that's one other thing to mention. You're going, how the hell do you play this? Well, this thing as it stands doesn't have a keyboard or anything that's going to make sound out of the box in this case i have hooked up oh, i won't bother to screw up the shot here but i got i got a got a key step down here it's hard to see there you go well making lots of sound on the mic great professional values or <laughs> production values all right enough of this nonsense uh let's go ahead and turn on oscillator two and three and see let's just turn on two so let's get back to our steady nothing's on right now so that's oscillator one let's turn on two and see what happens nothing right okay so why well it's set the low which is going to make hardly any of the sound and i gotta turn the volume up right and now there we go play around with its wave to try to find something that matches what my settings on oscillator one and we'll just keep them the same wave and then I can detune it a little bit too sure what the hell so that's how you can play with oscillator one and oscillator two and then there's another oscillator you can add oscillator you can add in to uh, change the sound same thing gotta turn it on gotta give it uh, a range and then I gotta give it some volume So you're saying that sounds like hot ass and yes it does right now so what can we do beyond it turning on the oscillators to uh, make sounds on this thing well you have a couple of options at play let's take a look at the filters so at the very easiest way to make a drastic change in the sound is to change the filter mode which is this switch up here Not great still, but that's one way to change the filter uh, from low, to, this is low, to high. And, uh, that sounds awful. Just... Good enough for now. Okay, so we've covered the oscillator 1, 2, and 3. We've taken a look at how to turn them on individually, control their volume, control what wave they're on, and their range. That's the basic sound, uh, that's the basic sound editing on this thing, but let's take a look at the filter. So while you're performing, the two knobs you're gonna use probably the most is the cutoff frequency and the emphasis one here. So while you know it doesn't sound great right now, but while you're when you when you're playing, these ones are kind of your modifiers that you can throw. Uh, I shouldn't call them modifiers, but your filter you can modif you can modify by changing it up and down on while you play to get some cool effects while you uh, bash some keys on the keyboard. Other switches. Now, um, what if you want to? Because right now, if I hold down a key. You know, 
nothing too exciting happening. What if I want to throw some modifiers in? Well, let's go ahead and do that. So uh, before I do anything, I can set modifiers to either apply to the oscillators by turning oscillator modification on or off and I can do the modifier modification to the filter as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for the oscillators uh, to begin with. And let's just... And so let's turn it off. Any difference? the hell are you selling me here nothing's happening well I got to actually give it some mod depth and you can either do that via this uh, dial down here and so that's a very basic you can modify that and also this dial if you have a, a mod a wheel or a touch pad on your MIDI controller will we'll move that for you so you don't have to touch it That's me just playing on the key step versus. All right, so let's go ahead and add some filter modification on now. Nothing really happening yet. Why is that? Well, where am I sending? Where am I sending the filter to? Or where am I the modification to? Am I sending it to the filter? Yes. Or I can send it to oscillator three. So you can see it sounds so weird there because I'm modifying oscillator three with this. Or I'm modifying the filter, which it really isn't doing too much yet, just yet. So Let's go ahead and give it a mod mix. So right now my whole mod mix is pointing towards uh, oscillator three and filter. Nothing happening yet, but let's go ahead. Oh, there you go, right? So I had to kick in the LFO a little bit for it to start hitting the filter. So, so that's a good example of why you might not want oscillator modification on, right? Like if you want something to just be hitting this filter heavily, you know, that's kind of a cool effect. Well, if you apply it to the oscillators, it turns into a ray gun, right? So, uh, you know, but you don't need to know all this off the top of your head. I find when I'm playing around with this, I just like to experiment. I'll get something that's even can sound awful with these with the three oscillators but by the time i start adding in the filter and effects and cool stuff like that you can you can get some nice happy accidents with this thing it's got a lot of sweet spots for giving you good sound you know what else do we have on this thing that we haven't covered oscillator three control so if it's on oscillator th oscillator not oscillator I keep saying that uh is going to follow what i do on the keyboard but what i can do so i can make it have a steady sound so you hear i'm a lot of uh, octaves higher than this is right now via the the menu board there the synthesizer <sighs> anyways if oscillator, oh jeez, let me tired. If oscillator th three is off, it is not going to follow what I do on the keyboard. Otherwise, it's going to follow what I'm playing on the keyboard. But otherwise, it's going to just hold the same tone. So you can use that if you want to use oscillator three. It's just a steady tone for your sound, or if you want to follow everything else, enable the control. What else? Noise. So if you want to add noise to your sound, uh, switch this guy on, crank this up, and then choose between pink or white noise. 
All right, so the only last thing I want to show you here is a little trick where you can run on just a regular old cable from the, the main out up here uh, to, which well, is not the main out, but it's the main out on the patch bay into the external in. And what will that do? Well, first you got to turn it on and you got to make sure your main out is on and the volume's going to it. There's a headphone jack here too. So if you're playing through your headphones and you do this, you go and hey, nothing's happening. Uh, that's why. So Turn this on. So you see that overlay coming on, it's just meaning you're maxing out the the uh, sound. I don't know what the hell it actually means, but it's not going to blow up the board. It's the overload basically coming, light coming on basically because if I, if I overload it too much. kind of an effect out of out of the device so having to run it through an effect pedal just a main out here into there and the only other thing I didn't cover was uh, the decay so it just dies so if I on the envelope I can add some decay and it will slowly give away and if you crank it all the way it kind of is a hold or sustained it will slowly go away, but it takes a long time. So I think it's like 12 seconds, 10 seconds, 5 seconds. It goes to milliseconds over here. Not 600 seconds, but 600 milliseconds. All right. So there you go. Just a quick, easy. It's not as intimidating as it first looks. Like, I know when I first looked at it, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, and I was just starting to get into this. That looks way too complicated for me. It, it's, it's not terribly complicated synthesizer at the end of the day. You have three oscillators, you tr change them up to how you like them to sound, or you know, you can play with some other switches to keep oscillator three steady or not. The controls can be played around with to modify the oscillation on the uh, fly or the filter or both. And then these red switches here just uh, turn everything off or on. The three oscillators are one, two, three, and white noise can be added into the sound via white or pink noise part of me can be added in the sound via this switch and you can uh, pump in something yeah maybe that's one thing I'll, uh, that's you know you heard it come in from the Behringer uh, Model D itself let's throw in a Volca and see what it does so let's go ahead and turn this back on we have anything on here let's just see now it's not going to help, but it doesn't actually play anything. Good enough, right? Okay, so let's, let's come out of the vocal keys right now. So nothing happens, let's hold down a key. Yes, this is only mono, but you feed in a different instrument on top of it, you get a kind of cool little mix. Sorry about that, only the best production on this uh, specific YouTube channel. Uh, my gimbal must have got tired of me uh, gabbing and fell asleep and decided to give up on life. 
Uh, I don't think I have my phone balanced very well into it, and it was getting rather hot, so I think it was a self-preservation on its uh, part. Anyways, let's let's wrap this up. So a couple things I want to say. <sighs> you know, is this a good starter synth? Do you know for a beginner, is this a good purchase? Absolutely. Uh, the only issue was when I was a be I'm still I'm a beginner. I've only been poking around for a number of months what am i talking about here but but at least when i even when i bought this uh what was holding me back i got it for a hell of a deal it was like 250 dollars canadian um usually around 400 plus tax i got a 250 with tax around there anyways it was no i'm like okay i'll take a chance on it but the reason i didn't buy it before that it was around 400 regularly priced until a couple months ago and it's been sliding down Anyways, who gives a crap? But um, I looked at it, and like I, I'll never be able to figure out how that works. But when you actually dive in and look at it, it's not very complicated at all. But for a beginner, it can be intimidating with the amount of dials and these weird red and blue switches. Um, don't let that throw you off. What should throw you off is if you don't get it for a steal of a price. Like, it's like, you know, if you, you, it's only full price. Be aware that you're going to have to add on a MIDI controller, which is going to be at least another 100 to 200 bucks. Uh, if you need one, the key step, I highly recommend it. Um, but add that to your purchase price for this if you have absolutely nothing. Uh, you might not need the key step if you plan to use this through uh, Ableton or, or something in your computer or DAW that's going to send MIDI information in from your computer out. If you're going to do it that way, you, you don't need the MIDI controller. But if you want to play keys against it, you'll need to buy a MIDI controller and one that supports MIDI, not only just USB. And then, yeah, well, do you, the other thing you got to ask yourself is do you want to support a company like Behringer? And, and you, in, in my mind, it's, it's not, you know, I guess the steal of the price got to me and... You can justify it being like, well, you know, Moog could come out and sell, you know, a cheaper version of their stuff, but that's not the market they're in, and, and yeah, so, but, you know, Behringer has done some sleazy stuff, like the, uh, like the Kern cork sniffer fake instrument to make fun of a reviewer who didn't really like their stuff and their, their company behavior, and, uh, you know, a while ago they threatened to sue a whole bunch of people on a forum, like an internet forum, so... They, they've done some dickish stuff, but then, you know, they do get people like me who aren't going to go out and buy a 55, you know, I googled a mini Moog up and it was like 5,500 bucks in the used market. Not that I'd ever buy it. I was just curious. So, okay, if I wanted the actual real deal, how much would that cost? Because I like this. Like, you know, is it? It's, it's, it's bloody expensive. So, for people like me and then more importantly for people in the developing world that it gives them a chance to have decent in, uh, instruments you know a pretty good price but for that pretty good price you know it's it's what what is a synthesizer to you is it just a tool or is it is it an instrument and these are being made in china in a factory for as cheap as possible versus something at moog that's being handcrafted and you know built with care and made sure that it's tested out now the quality on this has been fine so far i've only had it for a couple of weeks but you know going out there there's not a whole bunch of people saying these things fall apart some of them are built better than others. Some of them tune better than others. Like keep their tune better than others. Like a Moog is going to be pretty consistent along the line. Where where this is, uh, you know, a bit more, but a crapshoot. But honestly, yeah, those are just some things that and I'm, and I'm going on and on. But because because it is a factor where this is, is is the company you are supporting that type of company. If you if you purchase this or, or use this, like I am, or make a video on it. And it's just something uh, I didn't want to just show how this thing works and make you get all excited about it and not bring up that aspect too. Cause, and it's good to know too because you might go out and start looking up about uh, you know Behringer products and go, man, why do people get so um, upset about this stuff or, or don't really like them? There, there's some people that 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 factor really bothers them, and and I can understand why. It's and um yeah i'll stop talking but i uh, just wanted to throw that out there as part of this video anyways thanks for watching if you have any questions uh shoot them below i'll try to get to them as i can and uh yeah i hope, hope everyone is doing well right now and uh and yeah thanks for coming by and uh, uh i'll see you guys again soon